Good morning. We look at uh, Acts chapter 23, verses 1 through 15 today. And Paul is on trial. Uh, the, he's been arrested, he's been in the barracks, and he's been put in there somewhat for his own protection because of the uprising against him. And th this morning, now again, we find that he is brought back before the council by the magistrate, the chief of police, the tribune, or whatever you want to call this person. And Paul is looking, it says, intently at the council. And he says this, Brothers, up to this day I have lived my life with a clear conscience before God. And Ananias, the high priest, doesn't like that and orders Paul to be struck. And Paul responds with, uh, you know, he says, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. Are you sitting there to judge me according to the law? And yet in violation of the law, you strike me. So, and he isn't, he's not talking just to Ananias, you whitewashed wall. He's talking to the whole council. You guys are thick-headed, you're bullheaded, you're not willing to see, you're stuck, you know, in your position. And you're hard-headed and hard-hearted and all of those kinds of things. And, and I can say that same thing about the majority of us at some point, you know, in some regards, I mean... We, we get to have an opinion, and it takes quite a bit for someone to change that opinion. And it's one of those things that you know, we, uh, I've, I've heard and, and said, <coughs> excuse me, you can't argue someone into believing in Jesus. You need to show them, you need to lead them, uh, <coughs> excuse me again, guide them. But arguing, anytime you argue with someone, uh, you very seldom convince the other person of, of your point of view. I mean, it's, you need to show them, and, and this is sometimes, you know, when it says that Paul was arguing with the different groups of people, he was having discussion. He was trying, it was a teaching moment. He wasn't virtually going back and forth shouting at the top of their lungs, but, but you know, he, he calls them out on this, is that you're treating me unfairly. You have no right to, to strike me this way. I haven't said anything wrong, but the thing about what Paul said, I have lived my life up until this point with a clear conscience before God, you know, and and uh, how many of us can say that? I mean, I, I'm guilty of a lot of sins, and for me to say I have a clear conscience by, before God comes only, only through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and through, through whom my sins have been washed away and forgiven. But Paul says this back, you know, after he is struck, and... And some of the other people standing close to Paul say, you dare speak back to the high priest? And so, you know, Luke has just told us that Ananias is the high priest. And if you remember back during Jesus' trial, at one point it said that Caiaphas was the high priest, and, and then Ananias was no longer high priest, but then Ananias is the high priest. And so these, these job titles might have varied a little bit day to day, or from one council to another. I mean, this, you know, this... Uh, this ruling council that they've got today is made up of Pharisees and Sadducees. Ananias is the high priest. Maybe Caiaphas was the high priest of the Pharisees group. And, you know, because these two factions, Pharisees and Sadducees, uh, don't see eye to eye on an awful lot of, I don't know if I should say a lot, but on some policy. And we'll find that out in just a second. But, you know, so they ask him, well, you dare to insult God's high priest? And Paul says, and he quotes from Exodus, I didn't realize he was a high priest, for it is written, you shall not speak evil of a leader of your people. You know, I think about that. You shall not speak evil of the leader of your people. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to be supportive of them. We're supposed to pray for them. We're supposed to respect them. Um, and, and if we find them out of line or... If we find them wandering off, then it's to come directly to them privately and in person or with a couple of other people and have conversation. It's not that you start, you know, blabbing it on the streets and, you know, talking behind the back. That's not the way we do it. We don't speak evil of our leaders. And and, and today, man, we, we find that all over the place. I mean, it's just the respect that people have for a lot of people. And I, I remember growing up, I mean, our school teachers, we called them Mr. Whatever and Mrs. Whatever or Miss. We respected them. And if we didn't respect them, you know, we would be in trouble. And the same with police officers and, and military personnel and, 
and, and so many others in our society, we had respect for them and, and they're like the elders of our community as well. And, and I remember a, a story I read not so long ago that a, a young boy asked his father, uh, do I need to call this person Mr. or Mr. How do I determine which people I call Mr. or Mrs.? Uh, does it depend on the color of their skin or what? And, and his father says, someone is older than you, an adult, you address them as Mr. whatever or Mrs. whatever because you have respect for their age, for their, for their knowledge, for their experience of life. You know, we are not to speak ill of our leaders evil of our leaders that way yeah, but it happens all the time so i mean there, there are so many little nuggets in the in the, as we read through the bible that that speak to so much of what has always gone on throughout all of history you know paul is addressing this council and it says he notices that some are pharisees and some that are sadducees and so he calls he, he decides okay i'm going to again claim some of my heritage and he said Brothers and sisters, I am a Pharisee, a son of a Pharisee, and I'm on trial because of the hope of resurrection. The Pharisees believed in resurrection. They believed in spirits. They believed that there was life after death, whereas the Sadducees did not. This was one of the biggest differences between these two groups. So Paul, in seeing that this council is made up of both of these factions who have some disputes, calls on the group of Pharisees to say, I am one of you. And this is why I'm preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We believe in this as, as Pharisees. We believe that God provides a life for our spirits that live on after our bodies have thus died. And some of the Pharisees get on Paul's bandwagon and, and agree with him. You know, they acknowledge the resurrection, they acknowledge angels, and they acknowledge spirits. And so... Th then with Paul's claiming of being a Pharisee and some of the Pharisees, you know, uh, standing up and commanding him then way and saying, yes, yes. Um, then there's, uh, the, again, this dividing factor because the Pharisees say, well, we don't find anything wrong with what this man is teaching. He's teaching some of the, what we believe. And, and, and they ask, well, what if a spirit or an angel spoke to him? Well, we know from Paul's testimony and other testimony that that Paul encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus. That Ananias, or the um, that that Paul was given his sight back, you know, in Damascus because not only had his spirit, his angel, Jesus Himself spoken to Paul, but also to a man who came and gave him his sight back, and and. Um, so this is, I mean, this was Ananias that was there. And so this high priest Ananias is, is a different, uh, you know, different person that way. But, but we know that, you know, from what we read in the Bible that Paul had uh, been spoken to by angels, by, by spirits, by Jesus. And it says in verse 10, when the dissension became violent, the tribune, the, the chief of police, fearing that they would tear Paul to pieces, ordered the soldiers go down, take him by force, and put him back in the barracks. Put him back in the barracks. So he's, he's under house arrest for his own protection and safety, uh, according to the chief of police here of the Roman, Roman guard. And then verse 11, that night the Lord stood near to him and said, keep up your courage, for just as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, you must also testify for me in Rome. So with that, spirit with that with the lord coming to him again paul realizes yeah i'm here in jerusalem but this isn't going to be my ending place because i've just been told i'm going to be speaking for jesus in rome as well and rome you know that's the head of the the roman government not the jewish tribunal or the jewish council but before the greeks the ones in ruling order and then what we finish reading today, verses 12 through 15, it, it tells us that there was a group of about 40 men that made themselves, they bound themselves together with an oath that Paul was not going to live. That, you know, you get the, the chief of police, the tribune to bring him down here and we will make sure he doesn't make it. He will be, he will be executed on the way. Basically, that's what they said. There were 40 of them that, that you know, joined in this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders, and we have strictly bound ourselves. So you think about that, I mean, 
it, it's just with with Jesus' death too. You know, I mean, it was you know there there weren't people that had sworn an oath against Jesus that way, but you know the 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 chief council the, that Paul is in front of right now, these chief priests and the elders, and you know they had this conspiracy against Jesus. They wanted him gone. And even one of them had said, it's better for one man to die than for a whole Jewish nation to be crushed. So these, these men have determined that they are going to make sure that Paul is, is history, that he's going to be done and gone. And the last thing we read today, and we are ready to do away with him before he arrives. This is, you know, this is quite the, quite the mob rule, huh? Right? A lynch mob. And I remember reading about lynch mobs and lynchings in, in the wild, wild west, you know, of, of our U.S. history growing uh, as our nation grew and different things and uh, the, the Salem witch trials and, you know, people false, falsely accused and not, not given a fair trial. And, and it's, you know, with, with Jesus and with Paul, the people got stirred up against them because of their teachings, because of their beliefs because God was trying to change the world. God was bringing his Messiah, bringing, bringing salvation, forgiveness to all, uh, opening a new door, opening a new way for us to come to him as a loving parent rather than as someone that we had to be making sacrifices to and watching out for all the time. Um, but here again, you know, we're finding this, this mob rule, that their mob, you know, a riot, uh, just people stirred up and taking the law into their own hands. And, and, and we know, we've seen that happen in our recent history here in the United States uh, and with, the, with the riots and the mobs, and, and it's just not ever a good situation. Um, I guess the good that comes out of all of this, of, of Paul's journey, is that you know we know the story. We know how God is faithful to him. We know how God protects him and leads him. and. And um, even though I, I look at Paul and I, and I think about, you know, how people, you know, backstab other people sometimes and, and they, they try to undermine the work that they're doing and good things that way. And, and sometimes it's out of jealousy. Sometimes it's out of fear. Sometimes it's out of misunderstanding and, and differences of opinions. And, and, and we find that all the time. And so in the Bible too, and in our Christian churches today, we have differences of opinions. And I guess as long as we work together for the good of God, a little bit of difference of opinion is okay. But when we start to be destructive and try to tear things apart and to destroy other people, that's when we've gone too far. So we need to ask for God's grace and God's guidance each and every day. And he will lead us and guide us faithfully.